Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about Elsewhere Home by Leila Abulela. So the copy that I have is 216 pages long. It was originally published in 2018. If you want to listen to this book on Audible, it would be about six hours and 17 minutes. So let me read the blurb. From the New York Times notable author whose work has been praised by J.M. Gutzia, Ali Smith, Aminata Fauna, and Anthony Mara, Leila Abulela's Elsewhere Home offers us a rich tableau of life as an immigrant abroad, attempting to navigate the conflicts of assimilation and difference in an unfamiliar world. A young woman's encounter with a former classmate elicits painful reminders of her former life in Khartoum. A wealthy Sudanese student in Aberdeen begins an unlikely friendship with a Scottish man. A woman experiences an evolving relationship to her favorite writer, whose portrait of their shared culture both reflects and conflicts with her own sense of identity. Shuttling between the dusty, sun-baked streets of Khartoum and the university halls and cramped apartments of Aberdeen and London, Elsewhere Home explores with subtlety and restraint the profound feelings of yearning, loss and alienation that come with leaving one's homeland in pursuit of a different life. Now, I just have to warn you, the neighborhood is very busy today, so you will probably be hearing a lot of background sound today, but that's fine. We're going to roll with it. That's kind of part of the reality of living in New York City. All right, so I came to this book um, in 2018, actually the year that it was published, but I came to it, I think, later on that year. I was living in bed at the time, and the place that I got this book was on a stoop somebody had left it on their stoop in bed -Stuy, and i actually remember that that house used to leave the most amazing books i would say a, a good percentage maybe 20 percent of my current um bookshelf is made up of the books that i found on that stoop like from the paris review to um i think i even found a bell hooks book there i'm not sure but in any case they they I think the person who lived in that house was actually probably someone who reviews books or someone who yeah they might be there must be a book reviewer or maybe a book editor or something like that because this copy is actually the uncorrected proof so as soon as i saw that i was like okay this person obviously works in the literature world um but in any case ah oh, this book is a collection of short stories they shared 13 stories in total 11 of them were published before um and only two of them were new one of the books in here called the museum was actually the the story the short story that won i think the first ever Kane prize for african literature so that was pretty amazing to read that because obviously as a writer as an african person the Kane prize is like a huge um deal and i'm always interested in reading the stories that make the shortlist and the stories that actually win the prize and so one of those stories is in here titled the museum um this book deals with um topics and themes that arise from the immigrant experience but in very particular um she is ex she's talking her characters um are ex are um sharing the experiences as Egyptians or Sudanese people, um, as Muslim people, as people of the Islam faith or culture, and they have moved to the West. And in this case, the West is specifically Aberdeen, Scotland. And this mimics the movement that the author herself made. She is from Khartoum and she um, she's Egyptian Sudanese, but she lived in Khartoum and she immigrated to Scotland, to Aberdeen specifically. And so I think that's why the stories um, and the characters in here are all from there. This was a very rich read, very warm read. Like if you look at the color on this book, that's the feeling the book gives. Um, and that's the feeling I was left with after reading the book. A lot of the topics that we deal with in this book are around assimilation, homesickness, um, what arises when we try and fuse cultures together, whether that's in friendships or intimate relationships, um, or when we're starting our own families. Um, it talks a lot about the things that we shave away from us the things we compromise when we go to new places um and i guess that just comes with assimilation we also touch on topics of grief um and and joy there's a lot of joy and um 
uh, freshness and youthfulness in this book as well it's not just drab and like sad um, one of the stories that really stuck out for me there's a lot of them that did but one of them was um, one of the few stories that were told from the uh, a male perspective or the man's point of view rather and this was a Scottish guy that comes to Egypt uh, sorry to Khartoum to visit his fiance and I think they're actually about to get married now so they're probably gonna go back together but he arrives in Khartoum and it is just like a busy mess it is dusty the car that picks him up is the brother's car and it is a rinky dink and this guy's just like culture shock from beginning to end and i think the reason why i enjoyed that so much is because i can identify with being the person receiving someone who's coming to a new place who is just like wide-eyed like what on earth is happening and what is this car you know um literally i think the car they described in there my brother had a car like that at some point and he picked uh, one of my friends up from the airport um and the, i think i also enjoyed it because it offers a perspective of um how it must feel to be going the other way around so in the same way that it's a culture shock for a, a white guy from england to i mean sorry from scotland to come to khartoum um you can imagine the culture shock that someone may have when they're moving from egypt or khartoum to um scotland and i think there's a lot of like um I think a lot of people who live in a dominant culture forget how hard it is for people to assimilate to their culture because it's a dominant culture and so I really enjoyed the level of shock and just how different the world was to this character that went to Khartoum. Um, Another thing that was interesting is that I do often feel like when we talk about that part of Africa, but especially Egypt, um, there's a lot of like disconnect between Egypt and Morocco, I would say. I mean, it's not so much Moroccan stories in here, but I would say that little part of the of the continent is not always considered African. And I feel like... Um, there's a lot of complicated feelings that I have about that. And it was just, I think, this soothed the part of myself that had complicated feelings around uh, Morocco and Egypt and that area, not necessarily wanting to identify with Africa um, or the world not identifying it as Africa. And I think that soothing came from hearing the similar stories that and the similar experiences that we have. You know, there were just so many stories of like how your family will pack you a nice little, you know, thing to take with you. But then you can't take it on the plane, you know, but you take it anyway because you don't want to hurt someone's feelings. Um, the experience of like being someone who is in a new place and you're really trying your best to... Um, um, keep keep hold of your own cultural beliefs and customs and ways of doing things while also integrating into a new culture um, and I think yeah that is the immigrant experience but there were just very specific things and the way that it was worded that made me feel um, feel like I could identify with these characters um, I also felt like because I'm not Muslim because I'm not I'm not part of the Islam faith. I learned a lot in this. There, there, there was a way in which she just casually put in words that were um, that I would know if I was Muslim or if I was part of her culture. And I really enjoy that. I like it. I generally enjoy that. Well, when um, authors do that, when they throw in words that are of that world, whether that world is a culture. A racial group a place um, that may be foreign to someone who's not part of that culture I really really enjoy that a lot um, excuse me yeah I read this book at a time when I was <clears throat> in my second semester at the new school second or third semester um, I do remember that when I started reading this it was winter so either one of those um, and I really appreciated hearing about how other people we're navigating this and I mean this is categorized as a psychological as psychological fiction so I'm sure these characters are not real but the stories are very real in the sense that they I'm sure people have had these lived experiences before and it was soothing to kind of be on my own journey of trying to figure out schooling trying to figure out this culture trying to figure out making friendships trying to you know work and study at the same time and maintain relationships in a new culture that i didn't think would be so hard i thought that american culture was not too far from my own culture because we grew up consuming american um, television and food to some extent clearly not to the largest extent if i look back at like our diet growing up 
but I felt like I I felt like moving to America wouldn't be that hard but oh my goodness it was tough and I still feel like to this day I am still learning I'm still adopting a social language that will help me navigate the space and I'm still making sense of a lot of aspects of the culture and I think um, for those of you who follow me on Instagram if you look at my stories that's a lot of what I'm doing there trying to dissect and make sense of the culture that I, and the place that I find myself in but in any case, back to this book, um, it's an easy read. It is so accessible. Um, I mean, you go through a series of feelings in this in, in this collection of short stories. I think it was very well curated. I think the arc was great that was created um, in this book. I also feel like um, while you are instantly drawn into the books and the stories and the characters, I didn't feel like any of the emotions that I felt in this book overtook me in a way where I felt like I couldn't read this book um, quick enough. It, it was an easy read. I feel like I probably read it in like four sittings or something like that. Um, I also definitely read it on the train but mostly at home um, and it's because the chapters are short and it's just an easy read and also because I could relate because of what I was going through at the time. I definitely recommend it for anyone who's looking for a short story collection, anyone who's interested in reading the stories of immigrants living in the west um, and yeah, I think this is just also a great introduction to Layla's work. If you've never read Layla Abu Layla's work, I think this is a great introduction to her work. Um, she has written, I think, four or five other books besides this one. I can quickly just look here. Yes, she's read one, two, three, five more books that she's written. The Translator is one. Colored Lights is another. Minaret is another. Lyrics Alley is another. And The Kindness of Enemies. So I think this is a great introduction into her, her books. That's who I would recommend this um, to. And I also also would highly suggest that you look up Layla. I think she's an interesting person. I think I wrote down like a short bio of hers. Let me see if I can find it here. Leila Abulela is the first ever winner of the Kane Prize for African Writing. Her novels include The Kindness of Enemies, The Translator, Minaret, and Lyrics Alley. Her work has been translated into 15 languages. I mean, you know? Um, and she grew up in Khartoum, Sudan, and now lives in Aberdeen, Scotland. So I highly recommend looking into her work and using this book, I'll Swear Home, as an introduction if you haven't read her stories before. I'm so excited to share with you the book community spotlight of today. It's been weeks that I've been holding on to this and now I finally get to share. The book community spotlight for today goes to Linda Kaoma, who is also the person behind Linda Reads, which is a YouTube channel on YouTube, of course. She describes herself as a writer, a poet, a facilitator a dancer, a scholar, and a lover of fashion and books. And I think if you visit her Instagram, which is a place that I often go to for black woman joy and just like living your best life, I would say that her Instagram definitely reflects this. And I would also encourage you to go over to her Instagram and just have a look, just have a look around and see what I'm talking about. You will leave feeling good and being reminded to enjoy life you know and treat yourself well um her youtube channel i'll just describe it quickly i'll read i'll read her description um this channel was born because of my love for books reading and youtube since i spend an embarrassing amount of time in these youtube streets i thought i might as well start my own channel i'm sure my friends are relieved that i have this channel so i can stop hoarding conversations going on and on about my current reads this channel will hopefully be a constant affirmation and reminder that my voice is valid and my opinion matters. I hope to create a community of book lovers who are eager to have casual but critical conversations about books. I believe you don't need a specific set of skills or an arsenal of jargon approved by the literary community to talk about books. The only prerequisites, if the only prerequisite, if any, is a deep passion for books. I mean, how can you not just like adore someone like that? And when you go to her channel on YouTube, you'll totally get that feeling. She makes books very accessible. She breaks it down. And she also talks in a tone and a pace that makes you want to sit and listen. You know, I think there's very few people that I feel like that about. Like I said, I listen to things on two times the speed. Mm hmm all the time but Linda's one of those few people that I actually want to sit down with a meal maybe a drink and just listen to her speak um, fully at the normal speed um, 
the other thing that I wanted to say is that I've known Linda for a very long time and she's worked on a lot of incredible uh, projects in the past and I would say that she's really been a contributor to the literary um, scene in South Africa specifically but I know globally as well since she studied internationally and I as someone who is her contemporary and a friend um, admire so much her contributions and just watching her grow and I know that she's trying to get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube so if you can help me and help her and yourself actually by going over to her Instagram and to her specifically her YouTube and subscribing to her channel you won't regret it um, she also did this beautiful, interesting, amazing, witty uh, challenge where she wore different clothes to describe um, different um, book covers. And I wanted to share it here, but I actually thought, you know what, I'm going to share it in the link below so that you can go to her Instagram page. And then while you're there watching, just follow her as well while you're at it. It's it's so well done. It's so beautiful. It's so witty. It's so smart. Um, I, I adore her sense of style. Anyway, at this point, we're gushing, which is fine, I guess. Um, but I do. I really respect um, Linda and her contributions and the way that she carries herself in the world i will also never ever forget her because she is the person who is responsible for me meeting a lot of really incredible poets and and really ushered me into the world of poetry and we worked together on a project in 2015 quite a while quite a while ago and i got the, the chance to meet a legend um one of the legends in the poetry scene in the literary arts scene in south africa he has since passed on, but I got to meet Professor Gorapeti Wili, Kositili, which is just such a, a privilege, uh, a big, big privilege. And I'll forever be grateful to her for um, that opportunity. And with that, I will wrap up and say, please go follow Linda on her Instagram, as well as her um, YouTube. And just go and enjoy, enjoy her content. I think it is just so beautifully curated and um, you will do so knowing that this is somebody who's contributed greatly to the literary scene. Um, yeah, going to move on next to the mixtape of the week. Okay, so the mixtape of the week is by Atiya Khan. Atiya is someone who has also contributed greatly to the music scene in South Africa. Um, and you will be seeing a lot of um mixtapes and mixes by adia because i greatly appreciate her ability to put together like the dopest mixtapes and um i think also part of the reason why i chose this particular mixtape this this week is because the 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 title in the description for the mixtape is that this was a farewell to summer and obviously in new york we are bidding summer farewell right now and i felt like the mixtape was just so fitting but at the same time what i enjoyed about the mixtape and why i'm putting it in this episode is because i felt like it there was a sense of distance and movement in terms of traveling from one place to another but from one far place to another far place that's the feeling that i got when i was listening to the music there was like a melancholic nature to it and maybe that's because moving from summer to winter is a distant travel and um, and i i recommend listening to this um, mixtape it's 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 a very good amount a short amount of time it's not too long it's not too short it's just right um and another reason why is because when i was thinking about um homesickness i was I remembered a conversation that I'd had with Atiyah a long time ago when we were in New York. I had a hot toddy, I remember. I think I was a bit sick. And um, we were just talking about how our definitions of home and how home can be a person or home can be a foundation. Home can be... Um, what we've built over time and what makes us feel comfortable to move away from home or build a new home and i just always reflect on that um, conversation that we had how um, our thinkings around home differ so much depending on who you are and your background and what you've been through and what you've seen and what you want for yourself and so i highly um recommend listening to this particular mixtape that i've put that i've put down below but also just following atia's work i'll i'll put a few links in there so you can go on your own little exploration and see what you find um but i think this is a perfect mixtape of the week for ending summer but also for those of you who are going into summer for those who are saying hello to summer Okay, time to reflect. 
Um, I'm feeling good. I feel really good. I feel like I have been giving myself permission to do the things that I want to do and how I want to do them. And it's weird how I'm able to just flick that switch. It's not always on. I wish it was on all the time. Um, but in general, I've just been feeling really upbeat, really positive and just filled with gratitude. I feel like um, sometimes I tend to be on this mode of like doing, 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 or like moving forward or like onto the next, onto the next and completely forgetting that where I am now is where I wanted to be at some point, you know, and to just take a moment and whew, breathe in the reality of now. Um, yeah, I've been working on also making this apartment home. I feel like, I don't know if you ever remember watching uh, these cartoons when we were young, um, these bears like getting ready for winter. I feel like I'm a little bear who's been getting ready for winter, getting the apartment looking good um, and cozy and comfortable. Because listen, the Northern Hemisphere and winter is not a joke. Anyway, so one of the things that I've been doing is I've been buying flowers. Mm -hmm. have been helping a lot and i've been buying lots of candles um this one is completely finished uh blue sage and lemon smells really good but look at that it's already gone um i also just love the the lids and stuff that that come on these i'm just going to quickly show you the thing the, the candles that i got recently and then i'm going to call it a day okay so and then the next one that i got is sea salt and iris i mean these names the wooden lid mm. Mm, fresh and then the one that i'm actually got lit now is ooh, beautiful cactus and agave from natural essentials and then the one before this one is this one which is sand and fog and the flavor or the do you call candles the scent is mild wine i think this is my favorite of all the ones we got and this one's also finished and then we have this one is the final one send and fog um look at the lids just so beautifully beautifully made um and sage and sea salt so i'm very very excited to burn these at some point and they really really help me make home home um same with the um um, um wow so many arms today that's another thing my gosh same with the flowers um i've been really enjoying scents and how they can create a mood and shift um, a mental space aromatherapy for the win anyway i'm gonna start rambling if i'm not careful i hope you're all doing well i hope that you are thriving those of you who are going into summer i hope you are ready for summer but be careful because covid is still here i've been hearing from friends who are young who are getting sick with this thing please still be careful um i also need to be a lot more careful i mean i feel like I've done all the summer things and I'm now locking down for winter. Well, it's still spring, um, fall, so let me not rush winter. Um, but in any case, be careful out there. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones. And I hope you have a beautiful day further.